Death Row with Death Row closed captioning, and I'm back again with another review of another movie. Now, before I get started, please like, subscribe, and share to my channel. Uh, hit that notification bell if you want to see when things uh, drop for uh, my channel. And today's movie is Cold Harvest. One of my favorite uh, action slash sci-fi movies that, you know, I think I originally saw this movie when it aired on the sci-fi channel back in the 90s or early 2000s. I can't remember exactly. But here we go. Cold Harvest, 1999. Starring Gary Daniels, Brian uh, Guinness. If I'm saying that last name wrong, I'm, I apologize. And Barbara Crampton. Pretty uh, tight cast here. Now, Gary Daniels, he's been he's been around for a little while by this time, 1999. He's been doing a lot of of action movies where it was uh, more or less like the the kung fu or any type of fighting style action movie. He was playing either the bad guy or he was the main character or you know like i think it, it, if i remember correctly he was actually in a, a couple of jackie chan movies as well so cold harvest takes place in a post-apocalyptic world kind of like your mad max type deal except this is a little bit different you have this comet has hit the uh, entire world and has devastated the population with uh, no sun, so you, there's no longer uh, nobody can tell whether it's night or day. And uh, now the population is faced with a debilitating disease that is going around killing everyone. And this one guy named Roland, Roland Cheney, he's the main character, or the main uh, character in this movie, played by Gary Daniels. And Oliver Cheney, which is the other character that Gary Daniels plays, which is the uh, twin brother to Roland Cheney. And it starts off showing you a little bit of his, uh, you know, his action style. But she looks pretty cool in this one. And they, they do something a little bit different with the gun action in this movie, which I thought was very interesting at the time. And that he has this side holster with like a uh, with like a rifle attached to the side. Kind of like, yeah, there you go. Well, not that, not that one. Here we find it. Here we go. Yeah, Gary Daniels' character Roland Cheney has this this you know weird looking holster for his uh, uh, rifle on the side that he uses, and he can like pivot out in different directions and use it almost like a uh, pistol which I thought was pretty pretty uh, cool for this movie I've never seen that done before before this movie so I thought that was a pretty good element pretty cool element and then we get further on he, he he's you, you find out he's like a bounty hunter and He's basically he's come back to his hometown to want because he wants to clean it up, even though the whole world's gone to crap and he wants to come back and clean up his little hometown. And one of the first things he does is, as a bounty hunter, starts gathering up all the bounties on these uh, outlaws in the area. Well, he comes to find out that the, even the the sheriff, the ones that are paying for the bounty, they're they're just as corrupt as the crooks in the area so he has to end up fighting off the uh the police officers to even get out of the dang uh precinct he you know dropped the guy off at you see here and they skip they skip the here where they show what's going to happen to his brother there's his brother oliver cheney now, the reason these people are in this little convoy is because they have this marker in their blood that fights off the disease that's wiping everybody out. And they want to harvest or take them somewhere else in order to experiment with their blood in order to come up with an antidote. 
and uh, it just so happens that Oliver, which is Roland's uh, twin brother, has the uh, the blood type or the blood that the the thing in the blood in order to come up with the antidote. And of course, his wife is is kind of like going along with it. The wife being uh, none other than Barbara Crampton, right there. So anyway, back to Roland. He's getting the money from the sheriff, and the sheriff's like, "You realize we get ten percent of whatever?" I'm like, no, I don't realize that at all. And so the sheriff end up attacking him, and he ends up wiping the floor with him, obviously. Except for that one guy, he said he's he he recognized him from high school or whatever. I was like, I'm not gonna fight you. Anyway, so he gets his gun back from him. And of course, he sees a uh, Brian uh, Guinness or Guinness, whatever his you know, I'm not gonna murder his last name, but he his character is Little Ray in this in this movie, and he plays a character that knows Roland and Oliver from high school and he basically was a bully then he's a bully now and he pretty much runs the gangs or the biggest gang in the area that controls the gasoline and everything else very Mad Mask Mad Max esque <laughs> here we go and Roland sees that he's won it for like I think it was like 50 50,000 something like that something ridiculous so I Zoom in on that a little bit. Anyway, and we cut back to Ray and his gang right there. And they see this convoy rolling through town. He, you know, he having the biggest gang and everything. He's supposed to know everything that's coming through his little town. So he decides to basically just kill everybody that's in that convoy and they and of course uh, Oliver and uh, Christine which is the name of the wife in this movie they they hit they hide up underneath the truck trying to wait it out and then they try to escape and then of course you know he's like not having any of that <clears throat> and this guy in the damn <clears throat> guarded convoy he's telling them like look we can track these guys because we have that we trace their uh, blood markers with this uh, technology and we can track them down and that's how they know that uh, Oliver got away is because they were able to track him on that system and that's when he goes after him. Oliver gets shot in the back and tells his wife to keep running while he tries to hold him off and of course he Ray meets up with uh, Oliver here and there's some there's some type of game they used to play in school where they would with paintballs, where they would uh, have one bullet, one shot. Set the bullet down on the on the floor. Set the the bullet down on the floor. Whoever's able to get the shot inside the gun first and shoot the other guy wins. Except this time, they're playing for keeps. And of course, Roland. Not rolling, but uh, Oliver, who's already been shot, he's kind of nervous. He's trying to get all that stuff put together, and he doesn't make it. So I'm not going to show that part because it's kind of kind of gruesome. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, continue on. He's this guy with the glasses right here that you see in the image. He knows all about the blood types and what they're supposed to be doing. You know, they were basically coming up with an antidote for the disease that's killing everybody off well Ray looks at it as a way to gain more power because if he has the only antidote to the disease obviously he gains more power so he decides okay you know we need to track down and see if there's any of these left I didn't you know but the dude in the glass is like well you killed them all but we can still look so Ray spares his life for now because he wants to use them to hook up the technology to find. Anyway, yeah, Roland he goes into this little uh, pub area, and he basically needs to replenish his bullets. I mean, he just got paid for the bounty, so he's got money to buy more bullets. He buys more bullets. 
then he hears from some people that come into the pub that uh, they see his face and they were like, wait a minute, we, we killed you. And they realize it's the, uh, it's actually the twin brother, Roland, that's come back into town and everybody's freaking out that he's back because he's actually considered the, the, you know, mean twin. And what happened with him, apparently the reason he wasn't uh, there for Oliver or anybody else is he was drunk driving with his parents in the car with him. That's the way I gathered it. And uh, had a wreck and his parents died and so he ran off. And then after he ran off, that's when the comet hit and everything went to shit. And so he just decided to come back to make amends with Oliver. But Oliver's already been killed before he could get there. And now he's pissed off and he's kicking the shit out of all these folks. And so he goes to verify for himself if Oliver is dead. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, Ray figures out, they get all the technology set up and he tells the guy to start tracking to see if he can't find the blood types. Because he knows, he thinks one of them got away. And they find the blood type, but they find out that it's, like, very, very small. And that's when Ray figures out that the, uh, uh, Christine Cheney, uh, the wife of Oliver Cheney, the other twin, is pregnant. So she has that blood marker. That, so basically her baby is the cure now. And so he now is dead set on getting her, basically. So we get further on, we get Ro Roland, he's went and buried his brother. And he buried his brother close to their mom and dad's house or whatever. So he goes inside to the mom and dad's house, check everything over. See the twin brother picture there. And he hides when uh, what's her, uh, Christine comes in because he doesn't know who she is. He's been away for so long, he didn't even know that Oliver was married. So, she sees what he sees what she's doing, and, you know, the he, she's, she there's a gun hidden in the fireplace. She gets it out and is going to end up shooting her, herself, and then he stops her, realizing who she is. And then we go further on, and, of course, you know, Ray's guys come up in there because they're looking for her because they can track her. Because she doesn't know that she's pregnant, but Ray does. And she basically, her baby acts like a damn, uh, is, is basically being tracked by Ray. So they escape there. And of course, Ray can see that they're not going the direction that, that he wants them to go, you know, towards him. And then, so he sends off these dudes in the, the bikes to go after him. That dude's back again. And go further. So now they gotta try to get away. They go back to that pub and try to make a deal with this guy to get a another vehicle because they just crashed the other one, the, his main one that he had at the beginning. They they strike up a deal. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna keep a watch out while you get some sleep." And then uh, he realizes Ray's people's coming up. And this this whole scene's weird. Huh? Just. I, if you watch this, you can watch this on Roku, by the way, uh, the Roku TV app, um, if you have a Roku, or you can just go online, get on the Roku TV app and watch it, and the Roku TV app has it with subtitles, so that's pretty cool. So they figure out where she is in the pub and decide to raid the pub, and he's like, hey, we gotta, we gotta move, and at first, the dude that runs the pub, he's gonna try to, like, mess with Ray a little bit and he ends up getting himself killed and of course they capture him and start torturing him trying to figure uh, try to get the information on where the girl is and he ain't going to tell him and then the girl sneaks out gets him loose and of course they're trying to get through uh, this, this side of town right here so they can get her on a helicopter and get out of there <clears throat> all right so we go on go on go on they help him they're still tracking her they realize she's she got into a helicopter so of course ray 
here decides to uh, shoot at the helicopter at the tail of the helicopter and bring it down so he can get her. And of course, she gets caught. Enter the compound. Ray comes back in. Has no use for him anymore. Kills the dude with the glasses because that's what you do. Now he has decided he's going to get her back out of there and get her because he knows that she's pregnant now and he, he, she needs to be safe because the pregnant not only is an uncle but the pregnant baby also holds the uh, blood type needed to create the cure for the disease that's going around so he's trying to get in there and save them both of course he's kind of like doing a raid on the whole place while he has those other guys that he ran into helping him on the outside create a distraction and it gets to the point where him and Ray have to face off and by the way uh, how hardcore Gary Daniels is in this movie and how he is true to the character that he's playing he did most of these I mean if not all he did all these uh, you know the fight scenes and everything that he's doing stunt wise he did it with cowboy boots on I mean he was straight up it was like do what you gotta do with cowboy boots on he did the entire thing with that the only thing I think I, when I was uh, watching an interview on this, he requested that, you know, because, you know, cowboys like to wear tight pants and that kind of thing when it comes to, like, Western. So this is supposed to be like a Western apocalyptic sci-fi movie with a bunch of kung fu action and stuff in it, which is still this day, I, I love, this reason I love this movie. It's so different from anything I've watched. But anyway... <clears throat> It has been said that uh, Gary Daniels had to get pant, a pair of pants two sizes, a little bit, like two sizes uh, bigger than what he would normally wear so that he could pull off the moves but still wear jeans and not make it look weird. So that's very cool. So now they start to fight because they're both out of bullets. And... Uh, all I can tell you is you need to watch this movie if you want to see these fight scenes because I can't really catch them that great with just still shots like this just pausing through here. But it is some of the, some damn good fight scenes in this show. I mean it the way the way they spin their bodies in the air and and make these landings on the ground and on different items I don't see how they were able to walk the next day to be honest with you. The, the way they were pulling these stunts off. I mean, it's very, very impressive. And that's one of the reasons I really like this movie. So to keep further going, going further along, he gets, a, he, gets to, he gets to jump on Ray and then goes to uh, free her. He frees her. Of course, Ray's like, uh, we ain't done yet. It's like, we about to be. So they decide, you know, they're pretty much at a stalemate when it comes to fighting, sort of. You know, Gary Daniels' character did kick his ass, but he's still not going to let him go that easy. So they decide to play that game again, but this time, obviously, it doesn't work out for the bad guy. And they get out of there. So, without further ado... Code Harvest, 1999. I give this a... This is my personal opinion on this. I give this a 4 out of 5. I really like this movie. I still could watch it to this day. All the way through. I get stuck watching it. It's very fast paced. The action is awesome. So yeah. If you... Uh, if, you got, if you go online to the Roku TV app... You can do it on your computer, or you can do it on your Roku, on your uh, TV, and, and give this a watch. It's just called Cold Harvest 1999, or you can just type in Gary Daniels' name, and a bunch of his, his stuff will come up in the uh, search app. So, awesome action, awesome fight scenes, awesome stunt work. Uh, I even, I'll even go so far as to say the 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 what you call it the. Uh, the setups and the, uh, you know, the, the sets and everything, they look pretty damn cool for what it was. I mean, it obviously doesn't 
look entirely real. But they were doing things within a certain budget, and it doesn't come off bad, to be honest with you. It actually comes off really damn good. So without further ado, that's my review of Cold Harvest 1999. Like, subscribe, and share. That's Death Row out.